Coming up on today's Locked On Senators. Lightning may have struck twice in Ottawa, but the Senators punched back with seven goals of their own in a blowout victory over Tampa Bay. And with Tyler Clevin signing, who better to have on the show than Brad Schlossman of the Grand Forks Herald? He tells us all about how the signing went down and a pretty fun player comparable Sens fans will want to hear. You'll want to stay tuned for that. We also have a weekend preview. The Sens are in New Jersey to take on the Devils on Saturday. This is the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stutzle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 763 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, please subscribe and like the show wherever you get your podcasts. And on YouTube, it goes a long way to helping us grow. Today is Friday, March 24th in Pilsy. A playoff atmosphere against the back-to-back-to-back Stanley Cup finalists, two-time champs, and the Ottawa Senators come out and put a whipping on the Lightning. Ross, this was a statement game, not just because they got the W here, but 7 Two in your own barn. John Cooper even, he's so desperate, Ross. He's resorting to pulling the goalie with six minutes and 34 seconds left. Down 5-2. And what do the Sens do? Off the ensuing draw, Timmy gets it, goes down uh, the ice and passes to Brady for for a goal, makes it 6-2. You don't pull that stuff on these Ottawa Senators at home. And this was just a, a very impressive game from top to bottom from the boys. And they stood up for themselves, which I liked. It all started. The physicality started with Pat Maroon knowing his team was flat out there tonight. The Senators got out to an early 2-0 lead in this game. And he just wanted anything, something to spark the momentum. So he's like, I'm going to go at the rookie goalie. He covered the puck. He gave him an extra whack. And who else but Alex Dabrinkit, the kitty cat, who meowed twice earlier in the first period. He goes in there and says, no. That's not how this is going to work today. And Pat Maroon, I think, do you know exactly when he got the 10-minute misconduct? It had to be when he thought his stick was a fishing rod. He's whipping that thing around. Yeah, I think that's when it happened. They were mentioning on the broadcast, Ross, that the refs and linesmen had given him three separate warnings. And you can kind of see it. The linesmen are like, all right, buddy, like, we get it. You're pissed off. All right. Yeah, that's enough. Like, this is it. And then he did one extra, and they're like, dude, we told you. Like, we, yeah, we tried to tell you. One warning for each Stanley Cup ring. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's fair. That's actually how it should go, Ross. So you get a warning for each cup ring you got. Well, he went full full temper tantrum on the bench, too. But it was half-hearted. Like, if you're going to do it, whip the water bottle, smash the glass. He was doing everything half-hearted. That's kind of the the vibe of the Tampa Bay Lightning today. Everything was half-hearted or half under the belt with a couple slew foots that were pretty tough to watch. First Tanner Janot, a really greasy one. That one was blatant. I think Victor Hedman might be able to get away with saying, oh, you like shimmied away a little bit at the last second, but I'm not giving him the benefit of the doubt. The mics caught exactly what Jacob Chikrin thought about it. Yeah, and I mean, the irony, Ross, is Martian was saying that it was Hedman that when they were drawing at each other, being like, check the tape, check the tape. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Like you said, maybe there's a bit of pivoting by Chikrin there, but there's a clear reason why Chikrin's upset there. And the hockey gods uh, bless the sends on that. The shot misses, but then Drew recovers and heads it over to Brass and he scores on that power play. But that was a very interesting play there from a defenseman who we don't normally see pull stuff like that. Well, no, that they didn't get a call on that one, did they? No, no, they were already on the power play. Right. When that so happened. why they were on the power play is because of the the initial trip, wasn't it, for Tan- Tanner Janot? Or was it even? I think it might have been here. Let me check. Let me check the yeah, stateful notes. 
it, sorry, it was the, another trip in K. We're all over the place. We just watched the game recording late at night. The, vi- the vibes are immaculate. But you know what? The details, all I know is that the Tampa Bay Lightning went out of their way to make this uh, a battle in the trenches. And that's what a team like Ottawa, maybe you're thinking, oh, this isn't a playoff-tested team. Certainly nobody is at the at the level of Tampa over the last number of years. But that's the way they wanted to get down and dirty in this game. And Credit the Sens. They didn't uh, stoop down to that level. They didn't worry about, you know, getting even on the score sheet. Although, you know, Brady made a point to stand right in front of Brian Elliott in the crease the next time down. Make sure there was a little bit of that. Funniest part was every time Nick Paul was in a scrum and they were like trying to take each other seriously, but they're buddies at the end of the day. He was going at it with Thomas Shabbat and Batherson's just in there like (laughs) literally laughing. Batherson's laugh is just so funny. He's just like, guys, like. Let's not pretend this is like a beef. Like we we just had beers uh, last night. Like uh, like you don't need to do this. No, totally. Well, in this game, by the way, it wasn't the the slew foot was uh, was a different penalty there. But what I also enjoyed, and you know what, this it, it was the penalty on Hamnick, which was in the second period, and it was that uh, slew foot that, that they scored the goal on. So that's why the two, and I knew it was this because the two slew slew foots. foots. Well, they happened like two minutes apart. Yeah. And then also in this game, Brandon Hagel got a warning for shooting it late. And then the second time, shoots it late again. Huge melee. He gets the extra penalty as well. So an undisciplined game from Tampa Bay. But credit Ottawa for coming through in the clutch. But there were a couple different momentum swings in this one. I know you guys had your TSN turning points on the postcast. And I would recommend everyone goes check out that postcast because we had Mad Sogard's brother, Jonas, was in the postcast with us. First time he's ever been to the CTC as a lifelong Sens fan. And to watch his brother in goal, Pillsy, goalie-friendly show, Mad Sogard gets the goggles, and rightfully so. In a 7-2 win, usually you don't look at the goalie right away. But 27 saves, he's been sneaky good the last two straight games now. And what a bounce back it's been. For Mad Sogard. I'm so happy for him after that tough stretch. It can just shatter your confidence. And then you look at a guy like Dylan Ferguson coming up and playing well. You're like, oh my goodness, what's going on here? No, great mental fortitude for Mad Sogard to bounce back. So I just wanted to highlight his performance here as a major reason why the Senators won this game. Because, yeah, a lot of the goals were done late. They did my fa- yep. my second favorite thing. <laughs> we both know my favorite thing is scoring a goal at home while your last goal is still being announced. Yeah. How about scoring a goal on the goalie after an empty netter? You mentioned John Cooper, a little bit of a galaxy brain move, pulling it with over six minutes left. But then Austin Watson with an individual effort. Yes. And that made me look this up because you saw before the trade deadline, Pilsy, Tampa was interested in Austin Watson, according to reports. So I went, I said, I wonder what Tanner Janot is doing. They gave up a first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, I believe, to get him. And he's got no goals and three assists since the trade deadline. Austin Watson's got like three goals in that span. So I said, you know what? Maybe they had the wrong choice. Somebody said, who would, who would pick Janot for that price? And I said, well, Julian Breezeball for one. Yeah. I mean, he, he didn't really have the kind of impact I thought he would uh, in Janot, but this was a really good game from the Ottawa Senators and Mad Sogard really deserved the goggles, not Ross, not specifically for this game, but for both games he's played, you mentioned it. He's been really good lately. And, that's what this team does so well. I think they can find the the guys that need the boost. And, you know, they don't want to make it like a, a corny thing. But they can tell as a room, like, hey, let's support this guy. Let's give him our verbal support. Let's let him know we got his back. And when he, when he does good, we're going to reward him. So I think uh, keeping it in the crease, Ferguson to Mad Sogra as a goalie-friendly show, you'll love to see that. Absolutely love to see it. I love to see a lot of things tonight. Claude Giroux gets two assists. He's now at seven away. The milestone tracker is click, click, click. It feels like every game, man. He is yeah. so much fun to watch, and he's an Ottawa Senator for a lot longer than this year, man. It's it's unbelievable. Seven points, and I know a lot of people now are starting to get cocky and say, well, they play Philly next Thursday. How about then? I don't know if he's going to be looking at seven points in the next – three games but it'd be fun i am into it ross because not only is is that the the philly revenge game but ross the only other possible revenge game is right before up against the florida panthers and both those games are at home at the ctc so 
I have a feeling Claude Giroux is going to have some big nights. Uh, at least one of those, if not both, Ross. So look out. 70 points on the season for Claude Giroux, already surpassing his total by five from last year in Incredible. three fewer games. Unreal. Claude Giroux, seven points away from 1,000. Brady Kachuk set a career high in goals tonight by scoring his 31st, then added his 32nd as well. But the captain, since going without a shot in Seattle, Pilsy, hey, we've heard of sleepless in Seattle. How about shotless in Seattle? That nice. was the captain. I like that. Brady Kachuk. What's he got since then? What's he got? He's got 45 shots on goal in the last eight games. Whew. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I really noted that zero for Brady Kachuk uh, right there because that's only the second time all season it's been zero. This guy's normally putting up big shots. Math guy, that's 5.625 shots per game. That's going to hit the over. Good call with the calculator there, Ross. If you would have tried to do that division, it would not have worked out pretty there. But that's the thing with Brady. You got to go to uh, our friends over at FanDuel and get that Brady over three and a half shots. Even though it's always minus money, who cares if it's minus money if you know you're getting it back? Right, because then it's plus money in your account. Woo! Right? Ooh, I like that. Hey, who'd you guys have for your Send Central standouts? Because I want to hit you with mine before we get to the interview with Brad Schlossman, and then we'll come back on the other side. We'll take a peek at the, at the standings. Yes, we will. Standings. We will take a peek at the standings. Out of town scoreboard was nice. And we'll wrap up with a quick game day preview against New Jersey. But who did you guys have in the postcast? And who did did Jonas take one too? He did. So Jonas started things off with Jonas. I think I could be wrong. We got to ask him. Jonas. Oh, I feel. But I hope it is Jonas. I just put the put a European uh, flavor on it. So I don't know if it's Jonas or Jonas. Um, but he took Alex DeBrinket. Great choice. I took Eric Brandstrom, and Martian took Brady. Okay, really? Okay. Well, then I got to do the easy one. I was I was going to go a different direction, but Matt Sogard needs to be the Sen Central standout. We uh, the only re- obviously um yeah, <laughs> Jonas didn't take him? No, we we told him other than Matt's. So, we were like, okay, like obviously that's what you're going to say. And then I guess we just forgot to uh, to mention Matt's. So Yeah, okay. Well, we could go with Although him. Brandy was my guy no matter what. Brandy was my 1-1. One, one. Brandy was unreal. So and he only like, played 1548. Oh. He he carried the mail coast to coast. He butters the toast, as Gord Miller or Gord Wilson rather would say TSN 1200. So yeah, um, no, that's that's awesome uh, for him. And it was a night where Jake Sanderson admittedly wasn't his best version of himself. Three giveaways for Sanderson tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what you have with depth. And we saw Thomas Shabbat skipped the uh, congratulatory hugs and high fives after the game after blocking a shot late. So we'll keep an eye out for that at practice. Again, we're recording this one uh, late Thursday night, early into Friday. So follow us on Twitter at send central for all the latest updates on what happens at practice, where we expect Tyler Clevin to get in the mix. And then Jacob Chikrin left this game. And thankfully it doesn't sound like it was because of the slew foot, but he had a root canal this morning. That's that's wild that he was even able to play on that day. Yeah, honestly, like that's uh like aren't that's, you, don't don't they shoot aren't you drugged up for that? Uh Ross Brandon Pillar, not a dentist. Maybe yeah, I was gonna say someone someone in the household can let you know about that, but like Tom Shabbat mentioned after the game, that's the first he's heard of a player getting a root canal and playing the same day. So Jacob Chikrin, I don't know what it is in the in the raw meat diet he's got but he's built different i've confirmed with my resident dentist orthodontist that uh you get freezing for a root canal but you won't get any like the happy gas or anything so i don't know if it's a long-term effects other than just waiting to be able to eat however still super impressive that's why he missed practice in the morning right next thing you know uh so dj thought he was cramping up a little bit which maybe if your mouth's frozen maybe he's trying to drink water and wasn't able to swallow it it's just drooling all over him that's the worst yeah that's the worst (laughs) all right coming up we've got a great conversation with brad schlossman really a must follow on twitter we get into a a tiny little bit of ncaa tournament talk but it's all tyler clevin leaving north dakota and we have an emotional goodbye after eight straight seasons of a Sens prospect being on North Dakota. That's all coming up next. You're listening to Locked On Senators.
Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Indeed. Guys, Indeed is the top hiring spot that you need to be using if you're looking to hire for your business. They are the partner that can attract, interview, and hire all in the same place. And Indeed is the only spot where you're guaranteed to find quality applicants that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. So that's good. Low risk, high reward. Instead of spending hours trying to look on multiple job sites and line everything up, why not just use one single powerful hiring partner in Indeed? They're going to partner with you every step of the hiring process to make it easy. You'll find great talent through time-saving tools and Indeed Instant Match assessments, and virtual interviews. Everything is done so smoothly by Indeed. And with Indeed starting right now, a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job at Indeed.com slash locked on. That offer is valid through March 31st. Once more, guys, go to Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Check them out. It's the ultimate hiring partner site. It's Indeed.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub. You know how much we love our partnership with the Glebe Central Pub. The Glebe Central Pub is your neighborhood pub in the heart of the Glebe. You can join them for tasty food, cold drinks, and an amazing atmosphere. There are four more shuttles left for the Sens bus to and from the CTC. Thursday, Philly, Senators, March 30th, $15 gets you round trip and potentially, I know it's a bus, but you might see a K train at the end of the road. Could that be the debut for Tyler Clevin? You won't want to miss that. That's a, that's a where were you moment to tell your grandkids. Where were you when Tyler Clevin made his Sens debut? Well, you could be on the Glebe Central Pub shuttle, and they'll bring you right back to the pub where you can go have an amazing time, throw some darts, have a great laugh, and also be among other Senators fans. Sens game days are great at the Glebe Central Pub. You can head there. Make sure you go 779 Bank Street. And when you do, make sure you let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. We might see on the shuttle later this year. You never know who you're going to see on the Glebe Central Pub shuttle. So check them out. And $15, you're literally not going to get a better steal than that. So check them out right now. And the brand new bar top, it's smooth. Everything rules at the Glebe Central Pub in the heart of the Glebe. Go check them out, 779 Bank Street. And make sure you let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. All right, let's get to our interview with North Dakota's finest. Here is Brad Schlossman. All right, we now welcome back a friend of the show, our Nodak Sens correspondent. He's also a college hockey reporter at the Grand Forks Herald. It's Brad Schlossman. Brad, welcome back to Locked On Senators. How are you doing today? Uh, Thanks for having me, guys. Man, you've been telling us since day one that Tyler Clevin was more than just a big body, and now he's coming to the NHL. Tell Sens fans what you've seen from him from year one when he entered campus at North Dakota to how he's leaving now three years later. Yeah, he's he's been the player I kind of thought he would be. I, I remember uh, I was on this show with you guys three years telling you everyone's talking about his big hits. And it's true he is really he, – he can throw game-changing type of hits. And, you know, not many guys can do that. And so that's what stands out and people talk about it, but there's so much more to his game than that. Like if you get caught up on just that, you're you're missing what makes him a really good prospect and why I think Ottawa traded up to get him in the second round, because he has so many tools. He's big. He can skate. He throws big uh, hits. He can have, uh, he has one of the hardest shots of any player I've seen come through North Dakota and, uh, my 18 years of covering the team, he's um, he has some hands. I, I don't think he's going to be dangling guys at the NHL level, but there is some skill level there. Um, and really his uh, development has been, uh, you know, uh, consistent through his three years at North Dakota. And I, I think when I look at him, he's a guy that's still developing. He's not a guy that, Right now, what the Sens are getting is not what he's going to be in two years. He is still trending up. And, you know, as much as some of the Ottawa fans probably wanted him to sign last year, I think this was a good example of why uh, development is really important. He, he was on the power play. He The offensive side of his game 
has he's just starting to scratch the surface of what he can do offensively. And I don't know where he's going to end up. I think that's got to be the exciting part. Like maybe he ends up here. Maybe he, I I just have no idea where this is going because it's still going up. And I think that's something the Sens need to, uh, you know, pay attention to. And, uh, you know, when they continue developing him, if he starts next year in Belleville, give them offensive situations, yep. grow that part of your game. If you have him become a pro and pigeonhole him into this big third pair D man, that's going to hit people. You're not getting everything you can out of Tyler Clevin. Yeah. I think that's an important piece of Clevin. Like you mentioned, everybody just sees the size and the hits. And that's why when he decided to go back to college for one more year, I thought that was a really smart move by him because mm-hmm. before he had Sanderson there. JBD was there. There were so many defensemen that were kind of taking those big roles that you're talking about. And then this season, he was able to kind of elevate his game. How important was that for Tyler Clevin in his development, kind of having all those other guys move on and him staying? And do you think he really rose to the occasion? Yeah, you know, the UND put him on their second power play unit uh, this season, and the second power play unit basically ran around Clevin. It was all about giving Clevin shots. He he was in uh, the right circle. He's a left shot, and he would one-time pucks, and he ended up tying for third on the team in power play goals this year. And just the, the way he could change games on, on that second power play unit, he won them a couple games with key goals in the power play in the third period this season. Um, You know, some of the things he does, and and I don't want to say he's Dustin Bufflin because nobody is Dustin Bufflin. There's only one Dustin Bufflin, but he does some things that Bufflin did in the way that he can be physical. Uh, But Bufflin generated a lot through his big shot at the point, and they had him on the first power play unit there in Winnipeg, and he would hammer pucks and they couldn't, contain rebounds and I think there are some of those elements that Clevin can get to that he can be a guy that can hammer pucks from he's a a big uh, a big d-man and you know that's one of his advantages and the other thing is he's just so strong Um, so when he's killing penalties and he gets into an awkward spot below the the goal line he's strong enough to muscle a puck all the way out of the zone where other guys get it there and they can't send it out. He's so strong that he can get pucks out from difficult spots to neutralize. And that's such a huge advantage, I think. So that's another uh, element of his game. Oh, I think sense fans are going to be just drooling over that mini comparison. I know you said nobody's big buff. There, there's no, no chance. No. Um, there, there's a lot to, to like about the stature, the, the mean streak he seems to have, but as we've kind of chatted throughout the year, Brad, one of the things that you mentioned to me, I think is really interesting. I'd love for you to expand on a bit is he realized that the college game, the rules are pretty tight and he's suffered a few suspensions at the cause of that couple big hits. But you told me that he's kind of molded his game to his environment over the last number of months. Yeah, so, you know, he got uh, four major penalties this year. Uh, after you get a third game misconduct, you're automatically suspended a game. So he got an automatic one-game suspension. Then he got a fourth one, automatic one-game suspension. Um, and, and I will say, uh, Clevin was wrapped a little bit differently than other guys in the league. And, and it's partly because he's so big and strong. So if any other player in the league makes the exact same hit as Clevin – the guy just kind of bounces off of it and goes. But when Clevin hits him, it's just a train wreck hit. You know, the guy just goes flying, and of course the arm goes up, and it's that must be a major. Um, so, so part of it was just he's so so much bigger and stronger. Now at the pro level, the guys he's going to be facing are a lot stronger and bigger, and, you know, you know I don't think he's going to get some of those penalties. Uh, but he did change – the way he played, he, he was such a key player to UND that he can't just keep getting suspended. He can't keep getting major penalties. And the last nine games of the year, he had one penalty, one minor. That was it in nine games. So he essentially took that element out of his game and said, I'm not going to throw big hits. And he was still the best defenseman on the ice in almost all of those games, which I think tells you he is so much more than a guy that throws big hits. 
he can break up plays, he can skate, he can, th- there are a lot of elements there. And um, like I said, I'm really curious to see where he takes this because I don't know where he's going to top out at. He is, he is not topped out. And, and I think the sense really need to be careful in how they develop him because <clears throat> they got to pull everything out. They can. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think Pierre Dorian is, is aware of that, right? Like yeah. he made yeah. Tyler Clevin an untouchable <laughs> along with Pinto and Greg in a Jacob Chikrin trade. Like, yeah. so at least that gives some kind of hope yes. that they're not just like, Oh, this is going to be a third pair guy. Like I think they have uh, some aspirations for him. And having said that, Brad Ross, uh, he'll try not to admit it, but he was starting to get a little bit nervous that Tyler Clevin wasn't going to sign here. He, uh, the official time was, what, 5 p.m. Central, Ross? That's when the Today. panic button was getting Today. smashed to, yep. on uh, uh, Thursday. 5 p.m. Central, that's when he's getting nervous. But the deal's done. He's signed. How did this all kind of play through in your mind? Like, was this something that um, that the longer it went, you were starting to kind of think differently? Or what was the consensus from everyone uh, in the NODAC area with the Tyler Clevin signing to the sense? No, I, I never got a sense that there was a – I got a sense that it was a win, not an if. That he, he was going to sign. It was just a matter of when. Um, I, I don't know all the details in it, you know, the, the things that, you know, uh, entered my head, and this is just me with no inside info on this, but, you know, seeing the sends in a playoff push, um, you know, I might've even messaged with Ross like a little bit ago and I was saying, oh, he'll sign, you know, right away and they'll have him up. And then I looked at the standings, I'm like, wait a sec, they've made a run right now. Maybe it won't happen right away. Um, you know, so I, I just felt you know, I, I think everyone here knew he was signing and it just would, we didn't know when it was going to happen. And it took, uh, well, it's been less than a week still. So uh, sometimes those days maybe feel long, but I mean, we're talking five days here since his season ended. Um, he probably comes home, processes that a little bit. Um, you know, this is, this is a place he grew up dreaming of playing. So uh, I'm, I'm sure that's tough to say goodbye to a place that you've uh, dreamed of playing your whole life. Uh, and then after you, uh, you know, do that, you start the negotiations and, um, you know, obviously they were uh, able to get it done and he'll be heading to visit his old friends here uh, <laughs> uh, in Ottawa. Yeah, we were just talking uh, yesterday on the show that, Clevin's never actually been to Ottawa, right? Because of the COVID yeah. situation when he was drafted, no dev <laughs> camp, and then uh, the unfortunate and untimely passing of someone in his family missed development camp this past year. So people are like, does he not have a connection to Ottawa? But again, having Sandy and Pinto there uh, in the NHL mm-hmm. locker room, I'm sure makes the transition a little mm-hmm. bit easier. You mentioned it though, a Fargo, North Dakota kid, grew up dreaming about playing for the Sioux, the Fighting Hawks. And what's his legacy going to be? When you look back at the Tyler Clevin era, the last three years in North Dakota, what are fans and media and coaches, what are they all going to think? Well, I think uh, if there's one play that stands out to me, it it was him scoring the overtime winner last year to win the Penrose Cup as in CHC champs in Omaha. I think that will uh, definitely be a memory. Um, You know, just uh, the way he could change games, both offensively, physically. Um, He was just a really steady defender. And, um, you know, I I think when you have people around here uh, watch guys from the time they were in high school and Bantams and see them progress all the way up, I I think people uh, really enjoy that part of it. And so uh, I think there's a lot of people, especially in Fargo, you know, Grand Forks has had, uh, Fargo hasn't had a lot of uh, NHL guys. You know, I, I'm going to have to do this research before he plays for the Sens. Exactly how many? I the only one that comes off the top of my head is Danny Ehrman, who played two games for the Wild. So uh, Tyler Clevin is going to end up being the you know Fargo's best hockey player, um, and and I think that's pretty notable. For those that don't know, Fargo's about an hour from Grand Forks, so uh, it's right down the road. Now, oh, you got something, Ross? Well, no, I was just going to say Ottawa already had uh, Jake Sanderson became the first Montana-born hockey player uh, to play in the NHL. And I know you said some maybe less notable guys, but interesting that uh, they're, they're kind of mining some unfamiliar uh, areas in, in the States. 
Yeah, uh, they definitely have, you know, Whitefish, Montana and Fargo, North Dakota have not produced. Uh, I think they have a grand total of two games played, those two cities. Uh, grand Forks has sent uh, other guys to the NHL uh, where, where the University of North Dakota is located, but uh, Fargo, not many. So uh, <laughs> I'm sure the city will be pretty excited. Yeah, well, we're excited for Tyler Clevin. Now, if you were just to, just in a general sense, what type of D partner does Clevin need to thrive? Like, I'm not asking for a specific name or anything, but what are the attributes of a partner he could be with that you think could help set him up for success? You know, I, I think he might be a guy that you uh, look the other way at, is, is a guy maybe not who he needs to be with, but a guy that you may say, well, this guy would play really well with Tyler Clevin. He can, he can be a little uh, jump in the play a little bit more. And um, you know, Clevin doesn't, he, he can jump in the play. He did that a lot more the last month. He was getting a lot more aggressive and jumping in the play. It's going to be a while before he does that in the NHL. I have a feeling. Um, so, you know, he, he can be a steady uh, guy on the back end. He he's long so he can break up plays, um, you know, I could see him being with an offensive guy. Well, the Sens have a lot of puck transporters, right? You look either mm-hmm. Thomas Schott, Jacob Chicker, and Eric Brandstrom. They all look good, but they're all left shot defensemen, just I like know. Tyler. But we saw Tyler last season more so play a bit on the right side. Do mm-hmm. you think from your view up in the press box, does he look pretty comfortable on both sides? He did to me. Um, I, I'm curious to see what to, how it translates at the next level, but uh you know, I think he's a guy that's willing to do whatever. And, and honestly, Jake Sanderson was too. Both those guys, you know, would uh, do whatever the coaching staff asked them to do and would both be very effective at whatever they did. So uh, two really good players. And, um, you know, they, they did play on a pairing together uh, at times. So that would be uh, something if they uh, were reunited Oh my goodness. But all this reuniting means that there's no more Nodak sense <laughs> yeah. for now. The hashtag <laughs> Nodak sense. And Brad, you guys helped us get through the COVID. Start <laughs> yeah. They waited. You guys had the bubble going on. We had, yeah. on. We had Alex Heiner, Jake Brandt. We, we feel a connection to, to you guys in North Dakota and that's not going anywhere, but where could the next wave come from? Because I asked you, I said, was there a gap between Christian Willannon from 2015 yeah. to 2018 to Jacob Bernard Docker, to Johnny Tyconic, to Shane Pinto, to Tyler Clevin, to Jake Sanderson. And now there are <laughs> no Jack Sands yeah. left. Who is in the draft this yeah. year? that we should be keeping our eye on if the Senators look to reload, not rebuild the Nodak pipeline like yeah. we know the Fighting Hawks do with their program. Yeah, uh, you know, the the guy, to, the main guy to watch, I think, is Jaden Perron. He's a, a small, shifty winger, right shot. Um, he's skilled. He can see the ice well. He's going to have a really, really good college career. Andrew Strathman's a defenseman with the Youngstown Phantoms. Um, you know, I, maybe the Sens feel they need another Nodak defenseman because that's, they, they haven't, most of them have been D men. Um, so that could be another one. Um, it, it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see, uh, if, if they reload because it, it has been a long time. And I remember the bubble too. The Sens weren't very good at that time. So, uh, I think the Sens were more excited watching Nodak than they were the, the than they were watching Ottawa that year. So <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a good time. And now, uh, now they're all in Ottawa and uh, the tables have turned now, now all the Grand Forks fans are watching a lot of Sens games and, um, enjoying watching Pinto and, uh, JBD Sanderson and, and now Tyler Clevin. Yeah, we're just waiting for Alex to get the call up too, man. I'm going to miss the, those electric goal calls. Coming downhill, eh, with, with Clevin opening his account. Opening the account. Back. That's my favorite one, I think. The opening the account. That's awesome. For, for a first goal of the season. Do you have an Alex Heinart-ism that you like the most, uh, Brad? Yeah, I, I would. I think I might go with that one. I, I, I do like that one quite a bit too. So, um, yeah, he's good. Alex is real good. So, uh, UND's got a gem there. 100%. And they got a gem in you as well. Hey, just because there's no Dak Sens left doesn't mean that we can't keep catching up with you anytime that you want to reach out or uh, we're going to have to check in as well with what's going on there. We appreciate all the work that you do. We're going to continue be reading you with the Grand Forks Herald. And uh, hey, it's tournament time. Give me a favorite before we let you go. The tournament's starting. NCAA yeah. 16 teams. Who you got? 
And also the other thing to watch, there are all, there are always college free agents and Reese Gaber's coming back to school next year. So, yeah. you know, they're, they're going to be guys that uh, maybe they have an eye on The I, I picked before the season. I had Quinnipiac as my number one team and Minnesota as my number two team. They had into the tournament as the top two seats. So uh, why change now? It, it may be kind of lame picking the top two seats, but I did this these two before the season even started. So um, I'm sticking with Quinnipiac over Minnesota in the final. Okay, we're going to be watching for that. Didn't he call it the first year that he came on, Pilsy? He I did. Remember. I remember, yeah. You called it. I, who was it that won that one? Denver, yeah. Denver, right. I picked I picked Denver uh, last year to win the title. Uh, they were coming off of – they were under 500 the year before. And so uh, I got roasted on social media when that came out before the season. And then when they ended up winning it, I went back on social media and retweeted all those. You got ones. those receipts? I had a lot, of, yeah. a lot of fun. So <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens this weekend. It, uh, I think it's uh, up for grabs. It starts uh, – we're recording this Thursday if anyone is watching this later on. But uh, – yeah. I love it. He's already time stamped. He's like, just so you know, I picked the winner on Thursday. Oh, yeah, no. That's a vet. That's oh, yeah. a vet move. Yeah, because yeah, everyone's going to watch it and say, Quinnipiac's already out. What's he talking about? Well, Sens fans are cheering for that because they got Ohio State in the first game, don't they? Or am I missing that? Uh, Ohio, uh, no, Quinnipiac has uh, Merrimack first. Oh. I, I think Ohio State is up against Harvard or the, Harvard, that game right. happened. Yes. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, because we got Stephen Halliday there, a former NODAC commit who is yep. – yes. uh, so, hey, add that to the note accent. Yeah. We'll take it. We'll take yeah. it. As I, but, uh, no, that's awesome. We're going to be following. Always a great follow, even, you know, going back, getting the receipts. But this is a perfect time of year to make sure you're following Schlossman GF on Twitter. Appreciate you so much, Brad. Looking forward to our next chat already. For sure. Thanks, guys. Stick taps to Brad for joining us. Really fun conversation with him. Enjoyed that. And, until next time, my friend, it's not goodbye. It's see you later. And uh, we're always going to be following Schlossman GF on Twitter to make sure we're following along with all things college hockey. Coming up next, we've got a weekend preview. The New Jersey Devils are hosting the Senators. It went to overtime the last time the Senators were in New Jersey. What do they have on tap this time? That and a look at the standings next. You're listening to Locked On Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel, the number one sportsbook in North America. They are the official sportsbook partner of the Locked On Podcast Network and for so many reasons. Number one, Ross, though, is their app. I love the app. It's simple. It's safe. It's secure. It's easy to use. I like right around 5.36-ish, right before the games are going to start, and you have a better idea of who the starting goalies are going to be and updated lines and all the things like that, I like to fire up the FanDuel app and see what different odds they have. And Ross, I hit on a parlay, Pillsy's parlay hit. And the best part was, it's a same-game parlay. I know that when Alex Dabrinkit scores, this team typically does well, Ross. So I parlayed an Alex Dabrinkit goal with Ottawa Senators' money line. Cha-ching. Those are the types of things you can do at FanDuel. And if you're new, even better, because there's a no-sweat first bet up to 1000 you heard that right, $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. It's FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, Pilsy, final segment of the week. We got the music back for this one, Ross. We missed the music on the first intermission. I I missed that vibe. There we go. Riding into the weekend. (laughs) It's podcast after dark, not postcast after dark, eh? It really is. To the people who are driving to work on a Friday morning, just punching the steering wheel. Guess what, guys? You're a week away from Easter where you won't have to go to work on Friday. Oh, nice spin zone, Ross. Love that. Would you call it a good Friday, maybe? You might. I would call it a good Friday when the Senators come off a big win. 7-2 against the Eastern Conference champions three times over. 
My goodness, what a night. And we want to send you on Monday when the Senators take on the Florida Panthers yeah. at home. It's going to be an amazing atmosphere. And Tyler Clevin, whether he plays or not, will be in the building. It will be his first home game in the building. Gary Bettman will be in the building. Yeah. The sales process continues. And we're not going to get caught up in each report. Is it The Rock? <laughs> What's he got cooking up? Yeah. Is it Adam Sandler? Is it like, I don't know, Bono? Like anyone <laughs> anyone famous is all of a sudden in to buy the Ottawa Senators. Like Chris well, Rock, is he going to get a piece? Will Smith, are you going to buy it together? Didn't Will Ferrell, uh, yeah, I mean, that would be interesting. Uh, didn't Will Ferrell, uh, he was joking around with Ryan Reynolds about getting in on it. So, I mean, throw him in the mix too. A Brady a Brady Kachuk would lose his mind if Will Ferrell was part owner of this team. Imagine the Halloween costumes. Oh, my, my. God. Yeah, so we're not going to get into to each one. We're going to let this situation play out. But I want that atmosphere Monday to be wild. And our friends yes. at Shawarma Palace – Sent me 20 tickets out of nowhere. Our guy, Abbas, just out of nowhere goes, hey, I sent you a couple tickets if you want to give them away. I said, <laughs> a couple. You're damn, you're damn right. So we're going to, we got 20. So on Twitter, we're going to do 10, I think. And then the other 10, I'm going to reach out to people who comment consistently on the show yeah. They like, they subscribe, they do all the things that help our algorithm grow. The real ones. And bone, they're, everyone's real though, Pelzi. People can That's come true. and go. People fair. can come and go. Fair, fair, fair. If they don't like the way that I smile one episode, they want to leave for a week, that's fine. If they don't like the and welcome. <laughs> then, they, then they're back. See them. Yeah. Wow. Welcome back. Welcome back. Ooh, to- that was a little spooky. Ooh, I, next Halloween, remind me that, okay? Okay, yeah. Put in my notebook. I'm excited, by the way. For those of you who missed Mark Mathot on the show yesterday, we are yeah. having Jeff Chickren on the show this summer. I'm yeah. excited for that. We're definitely going to make that happen. That'll be an interesting conversation. Yeah, it will. Uh, you can find all of our interviews on YouTube. All of them. How many do you think we've done so far? Interviews? Yes. On, in, on the YouTube era? On YouTube, yeah. Our Send Central Citizens interviews. No. Okay. That takes they're out guests. a lot of them because we, they're yeah, they're, guests. yeah, they're guests. We treat them as such. Um, I'm going to say 60. 70. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Yes. 70. So you can go check those out on our YouTube page, wherever, you know, on YouTube, but you can listen to <laughs> <laughs> I go into autopilot sometimes. Too. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, you, you had your 15-second uh, company tagline already loaded up there. Yeah, yeah. My head is literally, the inside of my brain sometimes is like the Chiron, like the graphics, uh, what you used to do at TSN sometimes. Yeah. What do you call it? Yeah, Chiron, but it, not everyone will know what that means. So, like, you know when, like, little stat bars pop up or name graphics pop up? That's that's the Chiron. Oh, no, no. But that's not... So I got it wrong because that is what Chiron is. No, just like the thing you read, your script out of. Oh, the prompter. The prompter. Yes. My brain is like a prompter and it's like your team every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. No time for jokes, Pilsy. The Sens are five points yes, out sorry. of a playoff spot today. I'm Ron Burgundy. At the time of recording, Pilsy, the Ottawa Senators Ooh. are five points back with 10 games remaining. Is it ideal? No. But if you had told me at the start of the season that the standings would look like this, I would have been pretty happy, I think. I am happy, Ross. I mean, I I know it's still there <laughs> positive pillsy in the building. And maybe that's just uh, the runoff of a 7-2 beatdown of the Tampa Bay Lightning. But th- this is my thing. And I s- mentioned this on the postcast, but the Senators still have a chance. And yes, five points with you got to bounce three teams to get into a spot that's not easy but this is the adversity this type of core this young core needs and as fans we haven't even been close to this in years so i'm just soaking in the fact that they're still in this until they're mathematically eliminated you know me ross i'm a stats math guy it's all about the numbers for me i i'm believing i'm choosing to believe so let's let's go here we got 10 more games let's go 
And interesting to note that Pittsburgh's next game is against Washington. Now, Washington's the only team in the wild card race right now with more than 72 games played. 73. So we are cheering heavily for the Washington Capitals to beat the Pittsburgh Penguins in their next game. But the in Penguins, regulation. Yes. Absolutely must, must have in regulation. But when you look at uh, at the upcoming schedule, too, like the Islanders are playing Columbus tomorrow. You've got the Devils and Sabres. So we're all over the Devils. That means that the Devils will be on the second half of back-to-back sure. with travel when they take on the Senators on Saturday, which is going to be a great day of hockey because afternoon games, you're going to be watching all the way from 1 p.m. Eastern all the way down. But the only games that matter start at 5 p.m. Eastern with the Florida Panthers. We are huge Rangers fans on Saturday, okay? Huge Rangers fans on Saturday. We're also cheering for the Capitals in regulation, like we said, and your Ottawa Senators against the New Jersey Devils. Give me a key to victory against the Devils, Pilsy. What's something that you need to see out of this team if they're going to beat the damn Devils? I mean, Ross, we just saw it up against uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning here. So a similar kind of stature of team in the Devils. Not Maybe not like grizzled playoff vets, but as far as standings go, even the Devils, I think, are ahead of the Lightning here. So it's a good squad. If the Sens are going to have success up against this team, I think a big part of it's going to come from the power play. They go two for three tonight. Those power play goals were absolutely huge momentum goals to Brinkett and uh, Derek Broussard getting those. And it's huge for this team to feel like they have success and get the momentum going. I think the power play is a big part of it. And uh, up against the New Jersey Devils, that's a team that's deep. They just added Timo Meyer, an absolute stud. You need to take advantage of the man advantage. But the Devils only have one win in their last five games. Oh, damn. Yeah, the Lightning actually have had their number in the last couple of games here. Well, the, the no, the Lightning's the only team they beat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love I Are love you serious it. here? I swear yeah. I just looked at that. No, I'm dead serious. Oh, but no, no, no. Go what? back two more games. The Lightning beat them 4-1 and 4-3. I was like, I swear I just saw that. <laughs> I just funny. looked at I just looked at the most recent. I didn't expect them to play three times in the yeah. last six games. Yeah, so uh, if it was uh, AHL round one playoffs, best of three, the Lightning would have taken that one. Correct, except there wouldn't have been a shootout. So that one game would still be ongoing. True, or in protest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, this this Devils team, they're dangerous. Timo Meyer starting to produce four goals, two assists after a slow start, and that's in 10 games now. But I'll just give you a locked-on player, and it's a, a shared one. It's Shabbat and Chikrin, both guys who left the game early on Thursday, both important pieces, and both kind of you're hoping one of them can take the control that Dougie Hamilton has on the back end with New yeah. Jersey, and he got the game winner in overtime the last time that the Senators were in New Jersey early on the season. That was a gut punch game. Hey, that was in no that was in the November rain. Yeah, that was a tough one because I feel like that's one the Sens like they let that one slip away. And speaking of Dougie Hamilton, Ross, 66 points in 71 games. Holy wow. wow. Hopefully Shane Pinto's boys are at the game again because yeah. they were hilarious the first time in New Jersey. Pilsy and Martian will have the postcast for you after the game tomorrow. Again, if you missed today's postcast, elite. Jonas Sogard in the chat, in not even in the chat, on the stream, hanging out with us. Yeah. Make sure you're subscribed to Locked On Senators to know when new videos go live. Again, the catalog just continues to grow and we appreciate everyone's comments whether it's on the videos or whether it's just based on twitter at send central on instagram locked on dot senators it really does help the uh community around this team and around what we're trying to build with this show so my final thoughts is thank you so much and we really uh appreciate everything throughout this entire season and why not go on a run eh <laughs> yeah, as the boys say when they get the goggles, let's keep it rolling. Or or it's either that or a version of let's get the next one too. Like I love just the quick, all right, moving on. Well, let's get a quick moving on out of you. What's your final thoughts as we head into the weekend? My final thoughts are I, I just want to reiterate my little spiel before is just Let's not get too tied up in off-season stuff, uh, the Brinkett contract, uh, the sale of the team, all this stuff that that can wait for the off-season. Let's just sit 
in this m- moment where the Sens have a chance here. They just came off a big win. They got some home games coming up. It's just it's just nice to be in this position, Ross, where we're not already talking about the draft. So screw the picks. Picks are for losers. We're going for that wild card. Let's go. And Claude Giroux is coming for 30 goals. The only teams with three or more 30 goal scorers this year are the Oilers, Devils, Sabres, Stars, and Maple Leafs. The Senators will join that when Claude Giroux gets two more. Not if, but when. Claude Giroux gets two more goals. Please leave a comment below. We appreciate you guys so much. For today, we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators Podcast. Your team every day.